Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this complete army video for the Orcs. Uh, so, back at this series again, uh, when I complete a list, it goes through a stage of development. So, uh, either completely revamping an army or some alterations, and then gradually refining uh, a list and then putting a sort of a final uh, army together. So, I've done that for the Orcs. There's been a fair bit of refinement going on here, multiple lists stretched out over quite a while with the new codex. Uh, but settled enough on the current list that I have, so I think it's about time to make uh, a full video here of the entire list. We'll talk about all the units, uh, the structure of the Orc Army, the overall battle plan, uh, combinations, war gear, uh, hints and tips, strategy, uh, the whole lot covered in this video. So if you're into Orcs or thinking about getting into them, or perhaps you're a new Orc player and looking for some help and, and guidance, then uh, this video will contain a lot of information to help you. Uh, with your own orc collection and to help you as you play games uh, using your orc force. So I am a big fan of the orc codex, massive fan of orcs, uh, it's a great decision deciding to collect those, always admired other uh, people had orc armies uh, and then it comes as a faction that's highly recommended, very very enjoyable to collect them. Uh, this is just they're great for converting models or not, you don't have to, uh, but there is that opportunity to do a lot of conversions uh, and it's a, a, lot of, a lot of life and personality uh, with the Orcs, so a brilliant faction to collect. don't think I've ever really met an Orc player that regrets collecting Orcs. Most Orc players seem very happy <laughs> with the decision that they've made uh, and it's the same for myself. Uh, so I will zoom in, we'll show you some of the models, especially the new ones that have been painted up. So the Orc Collection, Orcs have been on the channel for a while, uh, and what I've done with this army is to uh, take the opportunity when the new codex has arrived to completely rethink the Orcs, uh, to try and incorporate units that I've already got, and then just inject some, some new life uh, in the form of some new units. Uh, so that's what you'll see here with the Orcs. So those that have been following the Orcs for a while, you'll recognise a lot of the units, and then there's some brand new stuff that's been added in. It's just a uh, a great way of just continuing on your collection uh, without completely throwing out the whole army but just adding new stuff in uh, just to add some freshness and life into the current list. So I think at this very early stage we'll just do a little bit of hobby time uh, and show you the, the newer models. So this is the uh, the newer model that's been added to the list and to my collection so it's the Orc Warboss in Mega Armor. It's one of the more recent sculpts from Games Workshop but got to be one of my top 10 sculpts here from GW, absolutely brilliant concept going on here, look at that axe, double handed, double spinning blade with back blade teeth axe for him, just typical orc style, absolutely huge, brilliant pose and then just mega armor orcs just look fantastic and this guy is sort of head and shoulders above regular mega knobs as well as a regular mega knob and there he is so yeah, he's broader than the shoulder as well and just that brilliant pose so 10 out of 10 for the sculpt and then just look, look at the character over here just this grot gunner on top and there's rules for that uh, as well and you see he's a major uh, feature in this list but I'll just rotate him around I would say to paint him up took um, four or five hours not too bad uh, if you go on the channel in the painting tutorial section or you search on my channel for orc painting tutorials, there's a couple of tutorials that you'll see. Uh, one for an orc uh, truck, which shows you how to do the vehicles, and then one for painting orc boys. Uh, different units to this, but the process is exactly the same. So the skin, the armour, um, and so on, all quite straightforward to do. Uh, and there's some major uh, time saving techniques that you can use uh, for painting up orcs which I show you in those tutorials so do check those out that'll guide you through from start to finish show you how to do the basing uh, your sprays 
uh, your base colors, washes, and then all your uh, techniques uh, like chipping. The checkered pattern I cover in the Orc uh, truck tutorial, so you can check that out as well. So, great way just to guide you through, especially if you're new to painting up Orcs, or need a bit of uh, inspiration or, or guidance on how to paint them, or you want to copy the exact scheme that you see here, and you're welcome to follow those tutorials. You're welcome to swap out colors, so you might swap out the red for perhaps the uh, yellow for bad moons or blue, uh, but the process and the techniques are exactly the same, whatever colors you decide to go for. But there he is. It's say my favorite orc model at the moment. Uh, and then other units painted up that are new would be really just this one here. So it's the Death Dread here for the Orcs. Now this was bought for me as a birthday present a number of years ago and it just sat there uh, unmade and it's been a tragedy. So I, I thought, no, I'm just going to slot him into my painting schedule, get him built and painted uh, quickly. And it's a major tip here for you when you're painting and that is to build the model, paint it and finish it straight away. Don't let it sit and turn into that pile of shame. Just you know, build it whilst you're inspired and you've got the motivation to do it. And so I built him quickly, got him sprayed up, got him painted and got the project done. I'm very, very happy with that. And again, this one didn't take very long at all actually. Uh, a lot of the work's been done for you. Just if you check out the paint tutorial for the vehicles, as uh, you know, a lot of this silver work that you're seeing here, all this technique, there's not much to it. It's a base spray, some washes, and then a, a glint of a highlight and that's that done and that's the majority of this model so you're actually saving a, a ton of time and then focusing in the more detailed work on the areas where the detail should be which is like the face and the shoulder pads here and the tips of these rockets and so on but there he is it's an older model but massive fan of this model really happy with how it's come out and he features quite nicely in the list so that's just a bit of hobby time just to give you an idea of uh, the way the orcs have been put together uh, but highly recommend if you're on the verge or thinking about getting into orcs, they come very highly recommended indeed. And as I said, the orc players that I know are all very, very happy with their collection. Yeah, and it could be a major departure from what you're already collecting, you know, Space Marine player, Astro Time player, and you want something different, then uh, orcs is about as different as you can get. So, And the model range for them in plastic now is absolutely fantastic. Both older models and new, which is the great thing. Yeah, this model's been out for years, fantastic model. This one's been out a much shorter time uh, and they all just harmonize quite nicely. So excellent options for the Orcs. Uh, big fan of the Codex. It's not completely ridiculously overpowered. Uh, it's not a useless Codex, it's pretty good. I think it sits somewhere in the middle uh, and you can get some great combinations of the Orcs. Now for my collection and for the list, I've tried to go for you know, hard hitting, a list that's going to fight well enough, but still wanted a nice spread, nice representation of all my favourite Orc units as well. So it's trying to get that combination of a list that's going to do well, but at the same time a list that I really like uh, hobby wise and including my favourite models. And really I, I'm a big believer in taking that the vast majority of units you can get some good use out of them uh, if you find the right combination. Uh, it's either the right war gear and upgrades for them or using them in combination with other units to get the most out. So one thing I mentioned before we get stuck in, do check out the sponsor. Uh, it's it's uh, the Outpost, they do discount 40k so if you feel you're inspired to get in talks then do use that link below, it does help out the channel. Uh, it's, and it's no cost to yourself, it's just uh, an affiliate link uh, that supports the channel. But uh, the Outpost, 20% off or more from 40k, it really helps out. Uh, collecting models and they do a massive range uh, of gaming systems and uh, hobby accessories and paints and sprays and so on. So for the Orcs I guess the artwork here you know surging fours these lumbering machines just behind just trying to uh, talking about the inspiration behind the list uh, it's key characters as a feature so like war bosses and so on and then your hordes of Orc boys and grots and so on. Um, so you'll see that a lot for the Orc artwork. So here, for example, Orcs just getting stuck in right up close and personal. Here. So I wanted an army that's happy, very happy to get stuck into close combat against absolutely anything. So that's what I wanted to be a major feature for this list. At the same time, drawback for the Orcs is they can be shot to pieces. So I'm trying to 
with the list you'll see I'm trying to get that balance right between yes get into close combat but at the same time just maybe on airing on the side of caution don't want stuff getting shot to pieces and then your attack is very weak so uh, you'll see that with this orc list so then think about the way 9th edition works this list is built for 9th edition uh, it's either the regular missions or your tempest of war so you need speed across the battlefield units that can move quickly around the board you'll see some units that are able to do that very well uh, you'll need units that can uh, grab and hold objectives so I've got some elements of the army that can do that um, for the orcs their philosophy is to move out to the middle of the table aggressively which you know they're on their the attack to do that a little bit of firepower support uh, just to hold perhaps home objectives and so on and just to neutralize targets if they can uh, and then a large majority chunk of the army to slam into the opponent and to cause as much damage as possible and hopefully to sort of cripple the opponent that they then can't grab objectives and maneuver around the board so that's the idea with the orcs just to flood the middle of the board and then strike out whatever direction they need to uh, from there so you'll see the list as it forms it's all centered around that kind of philosophy and so far uh, it's, it seems to have done quite well and the other idea with the orcs is you know stuff's quite cheap or can be depending on what units you choose that means you can flood objectives of multiple units and the opponent's got so much stuff to try and chew through they just can't uh, do it downside with the orcs is if they get if they get hit hard enough they are a bit glass hammer um, um, unlike other factions perhaps that are a bit more resilient towards the end of a game uh, orcs can really fall apart uh, if they take enough damage so i've tried to negate that as much as possible as well with this list so sit back and enjoy and immerse yourself in the orcs as we <laughs> build this list up. So first thing then, structure-wise, I've gone for a double patrol. Uh, they just frees up extra HQ choices. I'm running four, so double patrol, that's two in each. Uh, it works out quite nicely. It only costs you two CP to do that in total. So that drops me down to 10 CP. Um, for the orcs, I am a fan of taking the extra relics and warlord traits. That I have to pay an extra three CP for that as well. We'll show you where those have been allocated. So seven command points in total, which is okay. I don't want to drop too much more than that. But seven command points is pretty good. A lot of the orc stratagems that are quite potent are just one CP, um, so not too bad. And usually in a game, there's a seven CPs all right because a couple of one CP, one or two two CPs stratagems. And then a few re-rolls, and that's pretty much all I need for the Orcs. So they're not too reliant on tons of command points being available. So 7 CP is okay, plus the extra 5 uh, that you usually get at the start uh, of each of the turns as well. So that's my structure. Um, then, choice of clan. My list is built around close combat primarily, uh, and I, I'm still a big fan of, of Goths. So, quite straightforward, when you make a close combat attack, sixes pop extra hits, and that's not on the charge, that's all the time. So, fantastic. So it's gonna be like your vehicles, like Dreadnought type units, uh, your characters, which has proved very, very useful. So as you get a character five attacks, and then you get, they're all three sixes, and all of a sudden you just popped a load of extra attacks coming through, brilliant. Uh, so it really has helped out. Helps out heavier hitting units like Mega Knobs with those extra high damage hits coming through. Uh, so I'm a massive fan of that. Your army may not be built around close combat, but if you are, then uh, Goths comes highly recommended. And then secondly, each time all of this culture makes a melee attack, uh, if you charged or perform terrorist intervention, uh, you get plus one strength. So some of the weapons that I'm carrying, it does help tip them just over. Uh, it's a, a nice strength there, making them hit on threes, or wound on threes, or wound on twos, just tips them over in the right direction, as far as that's concerned. So, uh, that's a welcome addition just there. There is the Wall of Trait Proper Killy, which I don't take, or the Iron Gob is available as well if you go for Goths. Then Unbridled Carnage for two CPs, it's quite expensive, uh, but select one Goth core or character unit from your army, that's the No Marking About Clan. Uh, that has the No Marking About Clan culture. Until the end of the phase, each time all that unit makes an attack, uh, it scores an additional hit on 5 pluses instead of 6s. So if you really need to try and tip the scales in a close combat and pop those extra hits, perhaps you know Mega Knobs for example, then you can pay the 2 CP. Uh, that is available to pop the extra hits on 5 pluses. So doubling the effectiveness of that ability. 
So I'm very uh, happy with that because it is just close combat is the primary focus uh, here for my goffs, so of my op force. So very happy to take goffs. That's my option. So there has been a shift. Um, yeah, it may be I should cover it here to do the structure of the army. So. Yeah, it's to do with uh, taking war bosses. Yeah, it's back here, it's on page 51. So it's uh, underboss. You include a maximum of one war boss or death killer war truck model in each detachment. So another reason why I went for a patrol is I could take the double war boss uh, here. So it means, uh, what I found with my orcs, just from previous games stretching all the way back, is I usually have one war boss uh, that led the assault. Uh, but the opponent knew that, that was the main man and would sort of go after him or try and dent uh, or blunt the attack from that war boss that was being directed. So in a shift and change of tactic here for this list, I'm going for a double pronged attack, which you know, fits in with the orcs. A lot of their stuff sort of tusks, double tusk type style with them. So horns of the buffalo with the Zulus type uh, thing from the films as well. So uh, the idea is a double uh, pronged assault with the orcs. Now the opponent's got a conundrum, you know, which of the prongs they go after, they try and take out both, or try and take out one and ne neglect the other, and so it creates a real conundrum for them. And if one war boss really gets taken down, then at least there's another one uh, to lead the charge. So, the two war bosses, different styles as well. It's the one we've seen already. So it's the orc war boss in Mega, Mega Armor, uh, Grog de Whopper, as he's been named, and then couldn't leave him out of the list, it's a Gut Ripper here as well. So when you see the battle reports, usually you'll see the Orcs attacking in two prongs and the tip of the spear usually will be these two war bosses uh, to lead the way. Very, very fitting, very fluffy for the Orcs to have war bosses uh, leading the charge and a bit of healthy competition between these two in the games as well to see which of the war, boss, uh, war bosses does the best. I really chewed over that one. Do I drop Gut Ripper? I just I couldn't do it, and yet there was a need for another war boss. So instead of swapping him out, I just added another one in uh, and just run the two. It comes highly recommended to do it. They're both loaded out very differently differently to each other. So we'll cover uh, Gut Ripper first of all. So he's the the warlord here for this list. So war boss then. At 90 points, this is the great thing, I've always said this down for the different editions, you pay for a basic war boss, not a named character, and it's nice and cheap, 90 points, very, very cheap indeed. Uh, and then just pay 10 points for a power claw, as sculpted on him, fantastic model this one, huge fan as of Gut Ripper. And you've got movement 5, web skill 2+, plus, strength 6, toughness 6, uh, 6 wounds, plenty of wounds, Five attack space now, which is a brilliant number of attacks. And remember, those five dice, chances are you may well get a couple of sixes in there, and it's going to pop you those extra hits coming through. Uh, and then the four up armor save. They have a built in five plus invulnerable save, which helps with some kind of invulnerable save to try and block uh, damage from coming through. Uh, you know, if you've got multiple saves, so you're going to get a couple of fives. So come on, reroll to try and get another one back as well. War bosses are great for helping units out. Uh, clan, core, or character units. Within six inches, get plus one to the hit rolls because characters mentioned there, I believe so, that he's able to influence himself for that. So the minus one to hit, for example, with the power claw, he negates that with his own bubble and bumps himself back up to two. So now you're looking at twos to hit, uh, popping extra hits on sixes. If you go for goffs. So uh, you've also got, this one comes with the uh, combi rocket here so you know, you've got your d3 shots it is heavy so if you end up advancing him as uh, he's not going to shoot and if he moves because it's heavy in his infantry it's going to be sixes to hit so i just don't rely on it at all it just comes as a little bonus if and when he's able to shoot but it's quite rare that he actually is able to do something uh, with his combi rocket it's got a shooter in there as well if you're on sixes to hit you may as well fire both um so yeah, it's, it's all right, but it's, the shooting is just a sideshow, really, uh, for him. There is the 
a tack squig, a couple of extra attacks come through that. But the main feature is that power claw times two strengths is fighting strength 12, brilliant base strength that they get. Strength 12, strength 13 on the charge for him, eight minus three, uh, and then a straight two damage. It's minus one to hit rolls, but you can negate that uh, with his ability. So a few things here, I think the HQs are quite crucial. One of the keys with the HQs and with my close combat units for the Orcs is to keep them alive up to the point of delivering them in the close combat. So we'll cover that as we go along, but that's something to bear in mind. It's no, they're no use to you uh, if they're shot to pieces. So first thing is the WAG here. So uh, you call a WAG at the start of your command phase, you can call it on turn one onwards. So orc, uh, core or character units, so uh, things like mega knobs, orc boys and so on, and all your characters. On the first turn they declare it, so say it's, you declare it on turn two, uh, then you'll get the ability to advance and charge. And then you get plus one attack as well. So massive help. So the characters, he's going to go up to six attacks, for example. Or well, boy is an extra attack, which is really going to amplify them. Uh, Mega Knob's really going to help them out. Then on the turn after that, you're still going to get another attack. Uh, with get stuck in, plus one to attack characteristics for, of Orc models uh, in your army. So Orc models will get the extra attack. So Death Treads and so on uh, will get that. Uh, but the ability to advance, as was pointed out to us, has uh, been reminded in games, is that it's only court and character units can actually make that advance and charge on the turn that they declare the wild. But that's nice, simple rule extra attack, advance, charge, uh, nice and straightforward. So it's one of the things I like about the Orc Codex, it's quite straightforward compared to some of the others. So we've got a war boss here who's okay. Um, the way then to upgrade him. Uh, unnamed characters is through warlord traits and relics. So it's all sorts of different combinations. Great fun exploring the book uh, to see which combinations you can go for. Uh, but warlord traits for him is uh, brutal but cunning. So I take that in combination uh, with a relic, which is the killer claw. So with that you get. Um, times two strength, which is the same. It's eight minus four, which is particularly useful now against things like space marines. So eight minus three, and straight three damage instead of damage two. Crucial uh, in games, uh, especially against units that are able to like uh, effects like a minus one damage, for example, like uh, a lot of the dreadnoughts for the space marines. You're still coming at uh, damage two. So uh, I think that's a very very useful relic indeed. Uh, and then you combine that with Brutal at Cunning, so each time the wall of fights, if all of its attacks target one enemy unit, which you usually do, after resolving all of those attacks, it can make a number of additional attacks against the enemy unit equal to the number of attacks that did not inflict, did not reach the inflict damage step uh, sequence uh, during that fight. So, you roll some dice, you get some dice that have missed, put those to the side, uh, you then roll up to wound. Uh, and then those that have failed to wound, uh, put those to the side. The opponent then rolls to make armor saves. Any that he saves are then put to the side and added to that pile. Uh, and then you take all those dice that have failed and you re-roll them all again uh, with that trait. Now remember, hitting on twos and popping extra hits on those sixes as well, it means you can just get a, just a ton of attacks come through for a character who's 100 points in total, so, but the key is to get him in, to, to deliver him into close combat, to get those attacks and to get that damage. He can cause absolute havoc amongst the unit, but the golden key is to make sure he's able uh, to get in close combat. If he's caught out in the open, he'll be gunned down uh, quite easily. Five plus invulnerable, save four up, so he's not gonna last too long, so delivery is key uh, with this character and indeed with the orcs. And the other thing is, he's slow. It's a five inch move, it's desperately slow across the board, and so there's things that need to be done to fix that as well. So that's Gut Ripper. Very, very dangerous in close combat. Next is the war boss in Mega Armor. He is 115 points just straight, there's no points to add on for upgrades and so on. 
and he's just here. So similar kind of stat line, but he's got that two up armor save, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, still the five attack space, seven wounds on him though, so loads of wounds to try and get through uh, on him. And uh, still keeping that weapon skill two plus as well. He's got the built-in Uge Chopper, which is brilliant. Strength six, plus three, so strength nine. Strength 10 on the charge for Goffs. Eight minus three, which is nice, and then straight damage two. Uh, five plus invulnerable save for him as well. The Grot Gunner gives him plus one to hit rolls with his big shooter, but again, it's just, just a nothing really. It's, it's very insignificant. And again, he's granting that plus one uh, to the attacks, hit rolls for core and character units. Now, so the other great thing, the two-pronged attack, whichever units that are core and character go with him, uh, they'll get that bonus. And it means that the other times is when I used to run one war boss on one flank, you'd have the war boss influencing units and helping them out, but the other side, perhaps, of the table was a bit neglected, but now you've got that double bubble of influence going on on either flank. So it's a good, good aura is going on here for the orcs uh, to help units out. For example, you know, Mega Knobs, minus one to hit rolls to the power claws, these guys will negate that and push them back up to threes to hit, which is huge. It really does help the Orcs uh, out at that crucial point. Orc boy is hitting on twos in close combat whilst they're in range of these, so massive help. So that's the two prongs. We'll just push those over and we'll maybe top these up as we go along. Um, so you're starting to see the base of the army here. This is the two pronged assault, two solid uh, war boss choices. Uh, Wall of Trait and Relic being spent on him. So. A bit different on this guy. Again, trying to fit, I guess, with the theme. So I've given him a relic to crush in armor. So his armor save becomes four plus invulnerable save. Absolutely fantastic. So he's got seven wounds, four up invulnerable save, two up armor save. Brilliant. And you get plus one to his armor save and froze. So he's already on two plus. So now AP minus one, for example, come through. AP minus one drops him to three plus, and then the relic bumps him back up to two plus. Superb. And he gets better when he makes a charge move, which you know the theme is that he's going to get stuck into close combat. Uh, you roll a dice, pick an enemy unit of an inch, roll a dice on two plus, you deliver d3 mortal wounds. It's like a big shoulder barge that he's doing uh, as he charges in. I think that's a on that particular model, massive value to that. Invon save bumps up by one, armor save bumps up by one, and then very likely you're going to cause mortal wounds on the charge going in as well. Fantastic. I then do that in combination with a wall or trait, which is hard as now. It's nice and simple. Minus one to the wound roll against him. So now you've got a toughness six model with minus one to the wound rolls. So regular space marines in close combat will need sixes to wound him, <laughs> which, is, which is absolutely ridiculous. So often, you know, a, a tough unit will go in against him and then they're wounded on fives and then you've got the invun save, you've got the two up save and it really becomes quite difficult uh, to get this model brought down. And it fits the style of the model because he looks hard as now, as solid as a rock and so just a few tweaks with relics and warlord traits uh, to make him really good. And again, he's unnamed so you can customise however you want. There's all sorts of combinations you can go for uh, but that's the combos I've gone for uh, with those two. So... Yeah, we'll go, we'll do it in order here. So I'll mention the other HQ choices. So next up is a weird boy. I, I'm I'm not sure whether to continue running this one. He's just about in the list. Potentially is pretty good. Uh, so with the weird boy, this model here, as you see in the book. So Innards is his name. Usually he can hang around with either of the characters. He'll join one of the assaults. I'll put him over with Gut Ripper just there. Uh, but his main purpose is to buff units of psychic powers. That's the main focus of him. So with the weird boy, 70 points is not too bad. Um, the yeah, that's right. He can manifest one psychic power uh, unless there's loads of orc units nearby. He can manifest an extra one, uh, but he knows two crucially. So you are able to choose uh, two psychic powers. So, I go for, I usually take Warpath, so you take a core or character unit of an 18, it's a nice stretch on that, good range, um, and they get an extra attack, I think that's great, Mega Knobs, Orc Boys, 
or one of the characters, just give them an extra attack. I think it's fantastic. Just uh, it's quite straightforward. It's six. It's particularly helpful for units. That one. And the other one I take is um, uh, Fists of Gork. Uh, again, it's a six to make a golf, which is quite likely. Uh, it selects an orc's character, so I'm particularly thinking of these two, primarily. Um, then, to the start of the next psychic phase, you add two to that model strength and attacks. That's utterly ridiculous. Um, you're bumping him up to well, seven attacks each. Brilliant, and then with Goths, you know, popping those extra hits on sixes, very, very cool. Um, and then plus two to the strength as well, so you can tip them over into even higher strength. If the result of the psychic test is 11 or more, it's quite unlikely, but if it is, you get plus three strength and plus three attacks. So, so you're looking at five attacks base, um, on the charge, during a while, is an extra attack, and then a potential of two more attacks or three more attacks, and then six is popping extra, so you're just amplifying what that character uh, can do. Uh, and that's, that's the idea of the weird boy, that's his job, is to give boosts to characters and units nearby. I'm trying to create the ability for the orcs to hit hard, that's the way they can win their games, is to just to cripple the opponent just by chopping stuff up as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So that's what the weird boy's uh, job. Then. Yeah, a brand new addition here. I should have shown you this model. I'll zoom in quick because it's a brand new model that's been added to the list. So it's the uh, it's Big Mech in Mega Armor. There he is. And this kit, I've put him on top of a rock here just to make him just a little bit taller. Uh, but he's just from the Mega Knobs kit. You get all of this here. As uh, all of the uh, pieces to this comes in the Mega Knobs. Uh, kits, it's all available. Um, this is called a teleport blaster. We'll cover the rules for this in just a moment, but he's just fresh off the painting desk, and that's the fourth character for the list. But uh, again, if you like what you see here, just follow the tutorials. Again, this model is exactly the same process as talked about in those tutorials, so it's great resources for you. It is a fast enough technique here for painting orcs as well, so nice and efficient. Uh, for the orcs, so you can use those tutorials. Yeah, if you um, if you check out the video description, I'll endeavour to link you those tutorials just to make things nice and easy for you. I'm going to put him over that side again. You'll see them swapping around in games, uh, but I'll put him over that side just there. Multi-function character here for the big mech and mega armor. Uh, so here, and I'll spend a bit of time on these characters. They are sort of the core part of the army really, there's a lot of stuff going on with these, but um, 85 points uh, for him, and then I'm paying an extra 10 points for this guy, I think it's to take the power, I'll just refresh my memory here, but it's uh, Big Mac and Mega Armor, no it's the um, you get the power claw built in. Yeah, so the extra five points, the kill saw. So it's the teleport blaster uh, for him, just the extra bit of five power that's available. I think it's well worth it. So previously I was running a big mech, and the idea was to put units in the bubble to offer an inbun save, but it just restricted the deployment for my army. I often need to spread out across the board or deploy units how I need them, depending on the mission and where the objectives are. So it was too restrictive and didn't really work very effectively. Um, and the rules for at the moment aren't particularly good. So I've gone for a, mega not, a, a big mech. In mega arm it's a bit more supportive. You can join units, join in the assault. You can manoeuvre around the board. He's not fixed to one place trying to uh, run a uh, invun save to protect units. So more mobile with him. Nice and cheap though, 95 points in total. Uh, so another two up save model. Six wounds on him. There's so plenty of wounds on this guy. Um, Three attacks as base, but with extra bonuses going on, uh, then he can, you know, move goths as well. It's not too bad. Uh, Ballistic skill is four plus, so the shooting power that he does have is uh, pretty good for orcs on four pluses to hit. Movement four, he is desperately slow, uh, so that is an issue, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about a bit later on, uh, as far as transporting orcs around the board is concerned. So um, he comes with. A power claw built in, so there is a bit of close combat ability, which is fine. It's going to fit in nicely with the goths. 
Uh, he's able to uh, repair vehicles. I've got plenty of vehicles in my list. So you know, within three inches in the movement phase, he can restore D3 wounds. That's fine, he can do that. Uh, it's not his main purpose, but I just take that as an added bonus. Uh, and then really just to add a bit of DAC, a bit of firepower uh, here. Uh, for the orcs. He's a character so he can shelter behind stuff, he can fire out of open top vehicles with his firepower and for orcs you know, hitting on fours is, is quite significant. So um, the teleport blaster then range 12 so he needs to get quite close but this orc army is very mobile so you can do that no problem. Um, assault d6 but it is a blast weapon. If you roll well it comes in at strength 8 minus 2 and a straight 3 damage. Quite a nasty weapon. Uh, that one, so against heavier targets, vehicles, taking out characters, and so on, it's decent enough. Then currently, I'm running him with a, a custom shooter, and then paying uh, the CP for the dead shiny shooter. It's amazing the amount of firepower this thing has, and it's well spent on him with his 4 plus to the hit rolls, but it replaces that. It gives you range 18, it's a pretty good range. DACA 14 or 10, so you get within 9, you've got 14 shots coming through. And even at longer range, it's going to be 10 shots of space. It's basically a big heavy bolt at strength 5, minus 1, and straight 2 damage. And again, he can, he's a character, you can shelter behind other units and fire out with that. Uh, whilst he's repairing vehicles, all pretty cool. Uh, or he can uh, move around, mechanised, firing out of open top vehicles with that weaponry as well. And if he needs to, he can get stuck into close combat and help out in that regard as well. So, I think for the points you're spending... A pretty good option and uh, you know visually great model to have on the board so this is real real characters here for this orc list and it adds character to the entire army you know they've all got names apart from him at this stage uh, but they're all named and they can go out and do the heroic deeds and so on and all of four of them uh, vital units especially those war bosses they're the ones to watch in the battles so a lot of people ask for the list I, I will endeavor to write you out the list as well uh, in the comments section uh, or in the video description just to give you an idea of, of the list and the points values and so on so uh, that'll help you out you're welcome to copy the entire list go ahead and play some games and see how you get on leave your own comments and feedback uh, changes big or small criticisms praise whatever you want to do uh, whatever you see you think is strong you say well you should swap that unit out try this combination take that unit out add this in uh, expand this unit, shrink this unit, and so on. Uh, whatever suggestions you want to leave, leave it in the comments section below, and that can help out this list, and it can help out other Orc players. So by all means, do leave uh, comments in the comments section below. And then if you're on YouTube channel membership, then obviously you've got access to Discord. You can go on there. There is a tab that says Luke's Armies. You can go on there and leave as much comments and feedback there as well as we uh, continue to develop at the list. So that's the HQ choices done. And then I'll try and uh, push through some of these other units. So they do say for Orcs boys before toys. So your army does feel a bit under strength when you do go small on Orc boys. Um, so I was running two units of 10. It just felt it just wasn't enough. Um, you're meant to run loads and loads of Orc boys for Orcs. A lot of orc players will tell you to do that, but uh, because I'm mechanised and spending a, a fair bit of points on vehicles, then I've gone for three units of ten. So multi-function for these, there's one unit just there. Uh, remember that they're getting the buffs and bonuses from the characters. Uh, base of two attacks, I take sluggers and choppers, you get an extra attack with them as well. Uh, and then uh, if the wag is in play, you get an extra attack as well. Uh, and then uh, Goff's popping sixes, we're really going to help those out. Just pop those extra hits come through on the charge. They're getting plus one strength. You're bumping them up to strength five uh, with the sluggers and choppers as well. So all of that's really good. Not as good as they were against Space Marines because of Armour of Contempt kicks in now. So the AP minus one that they did have, or they have on their chopper, and it gets negated by Space Marines now. Uh, so they don't hit quite as hard as they used to. But they can swamp targets well enough. Uh, it's, Non-space marine units or targets are more vulnerable to these with that AP minus one coming through. Uh, but just you know, sledgehammer number of attacks, 40 attacks with a character nearby, twos to hit, brilliant. And that strength five, AP minus one, it can really just grind targets down. They're good at ambushing characters 
also. So one unit just there, another unit of 10, and then add another unit of 10 as well. The one change I do need to do this army is to uh, upgrade the base sizes on these to the current size for them to expand them out, which I plan to do. Shouldn't be too bad. For that, I'll just uh, cut, trim off the edge, but leave the basing and the flat part intact. Stick them on top of their new base and then just add, repair the basing on those, patch them in and do it that way. So completely rebasing. Uh, the unit seems to have worked quite well. I've done it for a number of uh, it's armies. I've done it with my Blood Angel, seems to have worked just fine. I'll make the orcs a few millimeters taller as well, <laughs> which they won't, they won't complain about. So that's those uh, three units of 10. If you're not going to go non mechanized, you need bigger units. Um, so you can go up to uh, units of 30 of them. So that comes recommended, you know, big blobs of those. You imagine 30 boys, you'd be on 120 odd attacks on the charge. Terrifying. And if you can get that twos to hit, and if they goff and so on, you're just going to just whatever target they're up against, you're just going to plast them with tons and tons of hits. But for my orcs, um, I mechanise them, so I take trucks, um, so like so. Orc trucks. I'll mention them now. I believe they are uh, 70 points a time. So one orc truck, just there. Uh, and then I'll add in another one, this is a converted one that I've done, just cut off the back part and shunted it across just to make it a bit different. Uh, there's a Typhoon missile launcher there on top, I swear, back in the day when Orcs were able to take rockets on top, they can't at the moment, but I've just left it on top of there just to represent the big shooter. That's sort of a dumpier version uh, of uh, the Orc truck, same kit, but just you get that bit of variety. That's a dozer blade I think from Old Lehman Russ. <laughs> just stuck on the front just to make them look a bit different to each other because you know when things look a bit uniform it doesn't look quite right for the orcs you need that ramshackle kind of look to them so briefly on the orc trucks the primary use for these uh, is to protect their cargo so for example you know if orc boys will go inside that means the orc boys aren't going to get shot the opponent's got to try and get through this first there's 10 wounds four up save there's ramshackle so again it's minus one to the damage uh, against strength seven or less coming through, which will help out. Uh, I know they're gonna get shot to pieces, but they're getting shot to pieces instead of whatever cargo they're carrying. Uh, they're open tops, so you can fire stuff outside. And the other key thing about these uh, is their speed across the ball. 12 inch move, instead of Orc boys going five inches, you're going more than double that, 12 inches across the table. So on turn one, for example, these will move out onto objectives, cargo inside, job done for them. The other great thing is the springboard they can give to units as they disembark. So all boys move five, uh, but instead you'll get disembark three, then move five, and if it's a wag, the first turn of wag, you've got an advance and a charge as well. So there is that reach involved. So it works quite nicely for ninth edition. You move out 12 inches up the board, get to the middle of the table, and then from then onwards you can move again if you need, or Disembark three, move five, advance, charge, and usually you're gonna get into close combat with anything that's near near these. I mean, the threat range is pretty significant with them. So that's the idea of the, the trucks. Transportation, maneuverability, protection for your cargo. So I'm running two of these for the Orc boys. The other unit's spare. It's gonna go inside the, the battle wagon a bit later on. So upgrades for the Orc boys. Um, a lot of all players will bury power claws inside the units, that's fine. I haven't bothered, I've just gone for a big chopper uh, with them. It strikes quite well, uh, there's no minus to hit rolls, it's nice and cheap, just five points. There's a big chopper in each of those boys' squads and happy enough taking that. You can pay the extra five points on top of that if you want to take a power claw, uh, if you so wish. So, Moving along, boys are okay. They don't hit too hard. They're all right, but they don't hit too hard. So now I'm going to show you one of the heavier hitting heavy infantry units. That's Mega Knobs. They'll match up just nicely uh, with Grog the Whopper, the War Boss. So my Mega Knobs, which are a massive fan of these, love the kit and the models here. So I was previously, for a long, long time, running Unit 4. 
Uh, but for this list, uh, I'm running a unit of five just to boost them up, just to make them a bit more durable. There's been plenty of times in previous games where I wish I had an extra Mega Knob in the list, and so uh, I've gone for it here with this squad of five. Uh, just to keep you an idea of what's going on, all boys 70, sorry, truck 70 points. Orc Boys, unit of 10 with the big chopper, 95, so cheap enough. The Mega Knobs, squad of 5, is cheap. 150 points for these, they did take a reduction. I don't pay any extras for weaponry, for close combat, or for shooting. So just give them their custom shooters, that's just a standard loadout, and give them all power claws, not pay any extras, keeping the cost right down, and you've got yourself a unit that they're three wounds each, the toughness five, the two up armor save on these, so they're brutes to get rid of. They're three to in close combat. It is minus one for the power claws, uh, but keep the war one of those, either of those war bosses nearby to negate that and to boost them back up to threes to hit. They goffs, they're gonna pop those extra hits uh, on sixes. So I send them in against anything, vehicles, Heavy infantry, characters, you know, they'll sledgehammer hit stuff quite nicely. So, Mega Knobs. And, yeah, 150 points, they're just not too expensive. You know, compared to investments that you're making in other units or other factions that hit hard, 150 points is very, very cheap indeed. So, very happy to be taking the Mega Knobs. Yeah, and they're mean. You know, if you want a, a mean looking orc army, then take Mega Knobs. So, big fan of those. Um, now, they run, because they're so tough, I, I want durability transporting them around the board. Now, these move five, but again, five is slow. So to help them out, I transport them around the table. This arm is mechanized, uh, and it gives them an extra three inch disembark. So three inches disembark, five inch move, possible advance and charge. So it gives you that nice stretch to get them where they need to go. So, I'll flick forwards to heavy support and we'll cover the battle wagon because it's the transportation here. So I take a regular battle wagon. Uh, you can take the bone breaker, but the way the points have worked out, I haven't done that. I've just gone for a battle wagon here, which you can make like a, a, a bone breaker. Uh, just you miss out on a few things. So there it is. Massive. Once you add this upgrade on the front, it's the thing's huge but a massive fan of this model. I think I, it's safe to say the York models date very, very well indeed. Because not really following any particular fashion, are they really? <laughs> Just sort of patching themselves together. So I think the models have dated very, very well indeed. The brand new models fit the older stuff. Absolutely fine. So, regular battle wagon. Transport capacity is 20. Meganobs take up two. So my unit of five, will take up half the transport capacity and the other 10 slots is that spare unit of all boys. Usually, I can tra change the transportation around, I can make that decision um, during deployment for the Orcs. Uh, so I can swap things around, but that'll max out my transport capacity. Uh, so 10 boys, five mega knobs, that takes me up to 20. But there's two units inside there. These Orc boys will help out, there's something else to point out. When your vehicle's destroyed, and you're rolling up to see if any models are slain. You're rolling up all the dice. And I'll take the models from here, just lose regular old boys. Uh, and I'm not gonna take casualties from the precious Mega Knobs. So that combo works nicely inside a transportation vehicle. As with the trucks, I try and keep the cost down because I know the opponent's gonna shoot this thing to pieces. For firepower, I'll rely upon that from somewhere else. So I'm not gonna load it up with firepower. It's bristling with, with big shooters, but it's it's hardly anything it's got here. So in fact, it's got no shooting ability at all. Battle wagon's 105 points, nice and cheap for what you get. You're getting a toughness seven vehicle um, with 16 wounds and a three up save, which is brilliant. Uh, it still moves 12, even the, the size of the thing. Uh, I then pay uh, 15 points for hard case. So it loses, hard, it loses Open topped, that's fine, because I've got no real shooting out of here. I've got a bit of Dakar available, but that's fine. I'd rather take the arc case. This is advised by an orc player to take arc case just to make it a bit more durable. You get plus one toughness. Um, so you go from toughness seven to toughness eight. That makes a big difference uh, when you're being shot at. So I'll happily take that just to add a bit, as much durability to this as possible. 
uh, and then pay 15 points to add on the death roller so it actually becomes something that can fight quite nicely in close combat because it is a base of six attacks um, and then Goffs kicks in for this so you're hitting sixes are going to pop extra hits and then with the death roller you're on plus one strength so strength eight uh, strength nine eight minus two straight two damage and your weapon skill goes up to two plus so you're going to hit very reliably in close combat so there's plenty of times you'll see him just rolling into stuff quite happily uh, there is a massive stratagem for this thing And it's a key one for any of the orc vehicles really, but you'll often see it on this. Ramming speed, 2 CP. So you pick an orc's vehicle uh, when you declare a charge. You're all 3d6 in total for that charge. It's a massive charge distance. Really, really good. Uh, and then on two plus you cause D3 mortal wounds as well. So for example, you've got an enemy character, you slam into it with your charge. You all those damage two attacks come through, goffs, popping on sixes and then you've got a D3 mortal wounds on top of that so quite often you'll see this thing going quite aggressive which fits in nicely because the rest of the army is trying to push up aggressive as well the other thing I'm going to point out at this stage is the opponent's going to shoot at my transport vehicles uh, and sometimes in the games when you see things quite tightly packed one transport vehicle be destroyed say it's this these are forced to get out I'll then dump a unit of orc boys and then they can hop inside here. Five of those, transport capacity of 10, they can hop in and then just continue the advance. So often you, you may well see a bit of um, transportation hopping with the orcs, uh, dropping units off, picking them up and so on, uh, to use those vehicles uh, to move units around the table. So there is that possibility as well. If I really need to ship certain units across the board, then I can do that with the multiple transport vehicles. So on further upgrade, Again, just to try and make this last as long as possible, uh, it's the Fortress uh, ability. So it's like a, um, like a custom job, I believe. Mech custom job. Fortress on wheels. Yeah. Here. Yeah, you can give it to a truck or a wagon model. So 5 plus invulnerable save. The opponent is probably going to try and hit you with heavy calibre weaponry. And so an invuln save of some kind can make a huge difference. The 5 plus invuln save doesn't sound very much, but if you've just taken 6 melter wounds and that thing's going to die, and you've got no armour save, but if you've got 6 dice steam 5s, you can disrupt that quite significantly with commander roll as well. It can really be the difference between life and death for this thing. So 20 points to give it a 5 plus invulnerable save. Uh, may well. Uh, prove a game changer. So adding all that together, 155 points. No decker on top, not worried about that. Uh, let's try and create a solid unit for transporting some key units around the board. So we'll zoom out a bit later on so you can see that the footprint of the entire list. And as I said already, by all means, leave comments uh, and feedback. Uh, if you're enjoying the video and it's a help to you, just hit the thumbs up as well. It's a massive help. Uh, for the video as well and just by leaving a comment of any kind also helps the video so that's the elites no it's not actually there's a new unit and it's a unit that i experimented with and have no regrets about here this is uh proved to be a very very useful unit indeed it's regular orc knobs not a popular choice i believe for many orc players but just a unit of five, like so. The best combination I've found for them is to take a unit of five and uh, give them all big choppers. So no burying power claws and stuff in there and paying the extra points. Just give them all big choppers. Uh, they are quite specialized then in that regard. You're not going to take on every type of target, but they're two wounds each, the toughness five, four up save. They're three attacks base. Uh, you know, if there's a warg on, uh, an extra attack come through, they could be blessed by psychic power to get an extra attack. Um, sixes for goths, pops extra hits, and if a war boss is nearby, they'll be hitting on twos uh, with their big choppers. Now for goths, you're on strength five. Um, the big chopper will give them an extra plus two strength, and then goths on the charge will bump them up to strength eight, and that gives you that twos to wound against toughness four, or threes to wound vehicles, or fours to wound toughness eight vehicles, and so on. Uh, big chopper's minus one, 
uh, but a straight two damage coming through, so great at hacking down marines. They're a great unit for ambushing characters, and just, uh, you've got a parallel going on here. I've got a big boss in mega armor with mega knobs, and I've got a medium armor, light armor war boss in the form of gut ripper, and then there's his five to go with him. So there's a nice bit of symmetry going on as well. Great thing about these, give them all big choppers, 105 points, so cheap. You know, and you potentially, on, a char on the charge, with a wag, you've got 20 attacks, popping hits on sixes, hitting on twos, strength eight coming through, and you could just cover a target and damage two hits. For very, very cheap indeed. So, and the other, the other thing I found that's tipped games is where you have so many units for the orcs all slamming into close combat all over the place, is the opponent just can't deal with it. They're just overwhelmed by too much, and you've got an answer for everything. You've got a unit that can charge into everything the opponent has, and it just overwhelms them, and then the Orcs will have victory. So I then pay 70 points to give them a transport vehicle as well. So this is uh, a converted uh, Rhino here. I'm going to zoom into this just to show you what's going on uh, with this model. So I want this to be a hobby video as much as Tactica here, but just an old Rhino or Razorback. And then the story behind it is the Orcs have ambushed it, they've smashed their way in and they, they broke in through the door, obviously. They shot the thing to pieces first of all, broke in. And then the crew, <laughs> the Marines that are inside, they decapitated them and stuck their helmets on the spikes. <laughs> so you can see the helmets. And then there's some graffiti, wow, gut ripper. And then over this symbol for the Imperial Fists is a, an Orc motif with the two horns. Quite intact on this side. The orcs have been added, adding bits on top. They tried to patch up the hole that was ripped out the side of the door, patching up some of the damage across here, and then just to really make it look nice and orky, just uh, the torso and uh, top part of the orc driver. And then, sort of semi part of the uh, razorback, and then extra. Orky bits being added, that's the door, the side panel from a battle, uh, from a truck being added on just there. And there's some kill markings and stuff being added on to that. So I just run that as a truck, just count that as a big shooter, no big deal. But it's a great way that you can add character uh, to your Orc Force. Now that was painted up again, exactly the same process as seen in the tutorials. And over the silver, I just did a water yellow and chipped it up, one coat. And as you get that dirty yellow kind of look, just there. These bits, these are just accessories from the truck kit, just stuck on top. It's all in plastic, so you can stick it all together quite nicely. That's the side panel there, from the orc truck as well, I believe. One of the panels that you can use. So keep your spare bits for the orcs, because you can use them with conversions like this. So really, really, really happy with how that's come out. And it just creates just a different vehicle that you can use instead of the regular truck kit. So just a bit of hobby time, just added on. So that's the transportation for them. All right, regular knobs are um, five models for transportation. So it's sometimes you'll see a couple of characters being stuck in the vehicle as well because there's five slots that are spare. So that's great. These can go. These could go in here with the mega knobs. You can uh, do it that way. So there's plenty of options uh, in that regards. But they. Against the right target, they're fantastic. You get, them, get one of the war bosses nearby, hitting on twos, absolutely brilliant. So very, very happy to have them. And they're so, so cheap, 105 points. Just super cheap uh, for what they potentially can do. So moving on to fast attack. Yeah, it's war bikers. Now I'm gonna use these differently to a lot of all players. So, so far I've invested, everything here is invested in my attack for close combat, all of this stuff. But I've got to think tactically now, I can't have the whole army herring up the board. There's objectives to control add across the table, on flanks, the middle of the ground, home objective, and so on. So I'm gonna use war bikers to do that. So this one is just uh, a cheap combination. So two regular bikers, and instead of the regular sergeant model, I've, I've taken the Forge World model here, which is one of my favorite sculpts from Forge World. Utterly fantastic, beautiful, beautiful model. Um, you can run him as a war boss, usually he's got his own rules. 
uh, but he's not going to feature in this particular list. Heartbroken to drop the model out, so instead I'm just going to demote him down to a sergeant and then just stick him in between these two pikers. So it's a regular war biker squad. You can take a squad of three, sort of minimum size, just to keep the cost of those down. They're exceptionally quick around the board. So I always tell myself, resist committing them to the fight. These are not to join in with this attack across here. These are to maneuver onto objectives is their main job. They can help out a little bit, but they're not meant to be. It's their main job is to survive and camp out on objectives. So I can swing these around on the flank. I can make a dash up the side of the table. I could secure an objective in a quieter area of the table. They are quite durable. They're three wounds each. There's four wounds on the boss, uh, the knob, the four up save. They have a built-in minus one to the hit roll uh, for ranged attacks. So there's plenty of wounds to try and get through. Quite hard to hit. And usually you'd be trying to hide them and so on because I don't want them involved in the battle. They're so, so quick. 14 inch move and a guaranteed six inch advance. You've got a 20 inch move of these. They can maneuver around the board very, very fast indeed. So I'll not say too much more about those. You'll see them in games being used tactically. The total points cost for them is 85 points. So 75 points for the squad and then 10 points. I have paid the points for a power claw. So if there is close combat taking place, because you've got four attacks base, sorry, three attacks base, potentially more attacks come through. So there is a bit of bite available. And you know, I had to take power claw because just the, the sculpt on there. Um, so that's uh, realistic enough with that sculpt. So. But still, they'll get in a fight if they have to, but primarily it's maneuvering with those. And I'll try and preserve and keep them alive because you, they're a valuable asset as far as holding objectives is concerned. To lose them, I lose a unit that's able to do that very effectively. Indeed. And yeah, there's more for fast set. This is a unit that was experimentally put in as just a stand in unit for other stuff, but. I've decided to keep them. It's Storm Boys. The sculpt on these is fantastic. A beautiful kit. If you don't have, if you're an orc player, and you don't have Storm Boys. I highly recommend them. The kit's incredible. The, the level of detail is fantastic. I really enjoy putting these together, painting them up, and the the, the customization that you can do on them is absolutely fantastic. So, squad of those. Full squad of 10, you can go big, you can go to units of 15, but a squad of 10 will do. They're nice and cheap, 110 points, and it take no upgrades for them. Not that you can. You can, no. You can swap the chopper for a power claw if you have the spare points. I don't, so I just take them as they are. So this unit is, the intention with these is another unit to saturate the opponent it's another unit the opponent's got to try and deal with, and they've got too many targets to take on. Um, so I just send the Storm Boys in. They can move nice and quick. They'll keep up with the mechanized part of the army. Move them 12. Um, they can deep strike. So that's another tactical option with them. Uh, on a 4 plus, take a mortal wound, but add a guaranteed 6 inch advance. Again, if I need to. Uh, you've, they are a, a core unit. Add, they can partake in the WAG and the advance and charge so they can scoot up the table nice and quickly. And remember you've got that guaranteed six inch advance with them as well. So it's a unit that can maneuver, maneuver very, very quickly around the table. They are quite vulnerable. If they're caught out, they'll be shot to pieces. Uh, the Toughness 5 does help out the Orcs, but still um, sheltering them is usually what I do uh, with those. And they're just a, another unit that's a pain, another cheap sort of 100 point unit the opponent to try and take on. So usually they'll join in the main assault, sometimes they're not, sometimes they'll just scoot out and grab an objective and camp out on there. Or deep strike him, some tactical sort of purpose uh, is the option with those. But usually I'm running a squad of 10, uh, and usually they'll join in as another unit to support the attack. So that's them. Still, you see, you see how much investment there is in the assault, which is fine, this is what I want to happen, because all this stuff will flood the middle of the table. And the opponent's then got a problem. Orcs have gone for the early seas on the objectives in the middle of the board. What does the opponent do? Do they counter-attack? Or do they hold back? And either, either, either choice is difficult. The 
The other major thing is because I'm mechanised, your opponent's got to try and chew their way through all of these transportation vehicles in order to get through to the units that are inside. And so there's that extra level of protection, extra effort that's required uh, to get through to the orcs. And then if you are going to try and cripple this orc army, you've got to crack open all the transport vehicles uh, to expose the army. So it's hard enough uh, work to do that. So uh, that's part of the, the philosophy of this orc army is that the mechanisation of it protects your hitting and striking power. But uh, by all means, experiment with the concepts I'm talking about here. See how you get on. Uh, and we'd love to hear love to hear back from you in the comment section or over on Discord. So then it's Death Copters. These are expensive, but I rate them. The downside is the opponent knows they're good. So they'll be shot at a lot. So they are quite difficult. <laughs> It's frustrating at times to see them shot to pieces, but it's just the way it is. I'm still going to run them though. Squad of five. The old sculpts are great, quite hard to get rid of. Games Workshop have re-sculpted them now, and the new sculpts are fantastic. So you can mix and match them again. Uh, they'll mix up quite nicely, but uh, copters, Def Copters, fantastic models. They are expensive. They're 50 points a time. So it's 250 points for this squad. These are my heavy armor tank busting unit. Uh, they're very quick so they can keep up with these or they can maneuver into position or move out from cover uh, and relocate nice and quickly 14 inch moves again speed tons of speed here uh, for uh, the storm boys bikers death copters transportation vehicles this is all car we can maneuver quickly uh, and burst out from its deployment zone uh, it's you're not really too durable they are toughness five with four wounds and four up save uh, but there's no one to save on them, the opponent can start to chew through them uh, quite effectively. But I can deep strike them in, is an option. At least they'll land usually and let loose of all their firepower. Uh, they get an auto advance of six inches. Again, you know, 20 inch guaranteed advance move or in total for their movement. Amazing, fantastic. Um, and then I take no further upgrades with them, so leave them as they, as they come. The standard loadout is taking the copter rockets, so range 24, which is fine for night edition with a smaller table, plus the maneuverability, then it's no problem. They are blast and heavy, so if you do advance, you're not going to be able to shoot them. Uh, but 2d3, heavy 2d3, so 2d3 shots each. So I'm looking at 10d3 shots of this unit. So you're looking usually, on average, you should be getting about 20 shots coming through. The fives to hit, uh, but once you get those hits, it's strength eight minus two and straight three damage. They are uh, they can cause real trouble for heavy infantry, monsters, vehicles. Um, hit the right target as being blast, they could really cause havoc amongst heavy infantry as well. So particularly dangerous firepower available these. So death copters, nice and fast, deadly for shooting and the other golden nugget with these is close combat and it can catch the opponent unawares at times they move nice and quick base of two attacks you know base of two is not that great uh not very good at all if there's a wag you get an extra attack so say three attacks for example but when you go down to spinning blades you're plus one strength so if i set strength five goths for me will be an extra plus one to strength six ap minus one and each time an attack is made with this weapon uh, make three hit rolls instead of one so those two attacks become six or well, those three attacks become nine tons and tons of attacks available with them and the goths so they'll pop extra hits on sixes so plow them into light infantry and so on and uh, they can do very very well indeed in close combat we do get ramshackle which is good yeah so i rate the death copters the downside is the opponent knows they're good, so that they become uh, a bullet magnet for sure. So often I'll try and hide them or deep strike them in, uh, but at times I've been a bit reckless with them and lost them so I'd, uh, early on in the game. And they are useful if they can turn, if they can fire one turn after the next, you're really going to get your points worth out of them. But if they're shot to pieces on turn one, then it's a big investment uh, that will cost you dearly. So there is a temptation maybe I was thinking to drop the weird boy, maybe take an extra cop to split these into two squads of three. 
Maybe. So it could be an option. But at the moment, it's a squad of five. Yeah, at the moment, I've got no option. Because it's uh, the minimum size of the squad is three. So if I was to split them, I do need that sixth model. So there's uh, plenty of fast attack options. So then going on to uh, heavy support, just to finish this list off. As uh, we'll talk about the, the Death Dread. So determined to try and make this thing work. Uh, and I've got a certain combination to make him really good. Taking advice from other Orc players. It's always nice to have a good chat with Orc players to admire their collection and to learn their Orky ways. So, <laughs> as it's the Death Dread. So remember I'm going for Orcs, uh, for Goths. So, he is, yeah, so Death Copters, by the way, 250 points, 50 points each. The Death Dread, 85 points, actually very, very cheap to start off with. Um, I then pay the points, we'll call it out now, I give him the Orchimatic Pistons option. It costs you 15 points. We'll call it out here exactly what it is. It's so, like, worth doing Stomp, Stompomatic Pistons. Yeah, it's 15 points. Here. So, um, Death Dread, Gorkonaut, or Morkonaut model. Uh, you get plus one to advanced rolls. That's okay. Uh, but plus three inches to your move. It's huge. Uh, you only move six. That is slow. Movement nine is way better. So it just bumps them up quite nicely. Is able to semi keep up with the rest of the stuff if you decide to start him on the table because there is another way to play him. So, uh, threes to hit, uh, strength five, tough is seven, eight wounds, plenty of wounds to get through. There's no damage bracket for him, so he's always going to fight at full effect, even if he's just got one wound left. Three attack space is okay, but it's not very good. And a three up save. Uh, remember, you're only paying uh, 100 points. This is another cheap type unit here. But then you get two big shooters and two dread claws. I want him for close combat only. I'm not worried about shooting other units that are going to do that. So to unlock his potential, you just take all the dread claws that you can. So you can take an extra two. So now he's got four dread claws. Uh, you then go to dread claw times two strengths. He's fighting at strength 10. Goths to the charge strength 11. Eight minus three and damage three. That's really really good. And then each time the bear fights, it gets an additional attack with this weapon. So I've got four of them, so my three attacks becomes seven attacks with goths and popping extra hits on sixes as well. That's plenty of attacks for him, really, really good. It will cause trouble for, again, monsters, characters, vehicles, heavy infantry. Uh, he'll chop away at stuff quite happily. And he's built like a tank, toughness seven, eight wounds, three up save. Now, he's got ramshackle as well, which will offer some protection. And in the combo, to, to finalise him in the list, is stratagems. If these stratagems weren't available, then I you know, doubt he'd be in. There's two stratagems. First one is ramming speed. Perhaps I should do... Um, yeah, no, I'll talk about the other one first. Yeah, teleporter. So it costs you two CP. Uh, use your strategy during deployment, select one non-monster orcs unit from your vehicle, from your army. That has a power rating of 20 or less, that's him quite nicely. You can set him up in the teleporter, so he's going to deep strike. Uh, so you can just drop him in. So instead of him being shot at as he trundles up the table, which is, could be an option, but other, the other options to keep him off the table and to drop him in. That means that you can just drop him, he's quite small, and you can land him at an appropriate point on the board, perhaps where one of your units can't reach, or you need a bit of extra support. I'll just deep strike him in, and there he is. The downside, and one of the annoying things, is that nine inch charge. So, you then combine that with ramming speed, it's quite costly, it's another two CP, but I give him the three inch of 3d6 total charge. Most of the time he'll make that charge, and you're gonna also get on a two plus d3 mortal wounds being caused by him as well. And he'll slam into combat quite effectively. He'll hit with the same force as a souped up war boss. Basically, it could even be a war boss inside there. Oh no, no, I think it's a grot crew. Who knows? But that's the combination for him. 
and I think that works quite well. So with his pistons, you know, once that combat's been resolved, he can then move up nine inches in amongst the opponent's units, uh, or if he's uh, trying to keep up up the table, he'll do that quite well. Nine inch move, plus one to advance rolls, he'll keep up with the rest of the army, and I can run him that way. So there's two options. I can save the CP and just run him throughout my list, uh, or he can deep strike in, uh, depending on what the scenario and situation and the opponent's force is. So as you can see, I'll try and feature all of these on the camera here. There's the boys. This list bulks out the table quite nicely. This is a big horde of orcs. You see the variety of stuff. Boys, mega knobs, plenty of vehicles, dreadnoughts, copters, storm boys, loads of characters. So I really like the variety of in this list. It's a great reflection of the orc faction is a great reflection of my collection for orcs as well so in that regards very very happy indeed uh, but there's more there's still more points available so i've got tons of units for the attack I've really shifted my emphasis for the orcs yes there's some shooting but close combat is where it's at for the orcs and so i'm trying to max out that as much as possible and to do it really really well uh, and then i've got some fire support units uh, they've got the bikers to grab objectives storm boys may well do that duty as well uh, and copters can move out, fire support, hold objectives and so on. But what about the home objective? Usually there's a home objective uh, and some extra artillery just to support. So that will be the job of the mech guns. So, they're back here. They're so cheap. It's ridiculous. They are quite hit and miss. So I try not to rely on them too much, just extra support, but if I find myself relying on them, I just get let down. Uh, so I just treat their firepower as a bonus. Um, so, make guns, like so. I'll just pull this out of the way so we can squeeze them in. And then here's the other unit. I hope this video gives you plenty of food for thought and information hints and tips here yeah, that's the crew there's loads of them oh dear here we go no i'll put them out because they'll be annoyed if they're not in the video so there they are yeah there's more there's loads of crew they're actually insignificant as far as the rules are concerned you know these don't count towards anything you be doing your measuring from the vehicle um so Loads of them. I think I painted these all in one big batch. Did get quite tedious <laughs> after a while. There's a, a squig there as well, just to mark out one battery different to the other, because I've sculpted them all as the custom mega cannons. But what actually I've taken two squads of two. You can go larger, you can go squads of three, but morale can be an issue, so it's two, it's two squads of two. Um, and uh, the way the points have worked out, I've got enough points to pay for one unit of custom mega cannons, and then the cheaper. Uh, Bubble chuckers. So, yeah, the Death Dress 100 points. So, mech guns adds for the bubble chuckers, squad of two, it's 80 points, very, very cheap, 90 points for the other squad with the custom mega cannons. So, the bubble chucker uh, is random, you don't get to choose the type of shooting, which can be annoying. Uh, but the idea is they can shoot as many turns as possible, they'll probably do quite significant stuff and they can punch well above their weight if they get their hits and wounds come through they can cause expensive tough targets uh, a lot of trouble so with the bubble chucker here if you're all one on a d3 it's a big bubble shots so range 48 heavy 3d3 strength 6 minus 2 1 damage blast quite good at shredding light infantry or well, the wobbly bubble heavy d6 strength 8 minus 3 3 damage blast great against heavy infantry vehicles and the dense bubble is one shot but if you get that hit strength 10 minus 4 and d3 plus 3 damage so on one turn it's very random but turn after turn if they're able to do that firepower uh, they'll start causing damage um, range 48 brilliant reach across the board you're going to reach on one side to the next no problem the custom mega can is a bit shorter range range 36 but still really good for ninth edition it's heavy d6 so you could get those six shots, you know, fantastic, could roll one. So they are very hit and miss. Strength 8 minus 3, D6 damage. Um, and then the, it is blast, so against larger, heavier targets, they're particularly good. But again, 
One turn of shooting is not going to do too much, but if you can get them firing turn after turn, and if you line them up well, good line of sight, uh, protect them. And the idea is that these are firing away. The opponent's too busy trying to do all this, then you've got loads of firepower. Each turn coming from these just to support. Uh, and it means you can bring down some firepower that can reach perhaps where your close combat units can't. So your opponent's got screens, he's got, say, some heavy firepower deeper within his ranks. These can reach over the top and fire at targets uh, where close combat units would struggle to get them. So that's the idea of those. And I can camp these out on the home objective. I could put the big mech with them just to repair them, to dacker up and protect them and so on. There's that option as well. But uh, that is the final list here for the Orcs. It's uh, a nice variety. Variety is the spice of life here. And it's the case with the Orcs. But uh, that is the final 2,000 points list. So there it is. You've got uh, your mechanised infantry assault here. Huge blob of stuff. And it's like a big avalanche. It's green tired. Mechanised. To move out. To perform two functions, to move out to the centre of the table, grab objectives, um, to deter the opponent from moving out to the middle of the table, and then to after that to strike out at, at the opponent from that point. My empty transport vehicles can camp out objectives and hoard around those. My supporting units can get onto the objectives, the death copters, the bikers, storm boys, and then from the back, firepower support, the possibility of a teleporting uh, kamikaze charge and death dread as well characters buried inside all of this stuff to burst out and cause havoc also. The opponent can bring down any of these units but the problem for them is they can't bring them all down. That's the idea is they can't bring them all down. There's so many targets to try and deal with it just overwhelms the opponent and they may well perform really really well in one particular combat perhaps where they interrupt play but I'm causing havoc amongst the rest of the army uh, is the idea. So preservation is key. If I go in half strength, the opponent rebuffs that, uh, pushes the orcs back, and then the orcs are in trouble. So it's the idea is loads and loads of units uh, to deliver a sledgehammer blow. Uh, turn two, turn three is the idea uh, with this orc force. So, you know, board control, maneuverability, speed, some firepower, heavy hitting in close combat uh, is the idea with this orc list. You can borrow any elements of this that you want. It'd be great if someone copies this list and then uses it in games. Let us know how you get on. Uh, hints, suggestions, changes to this list, leave that in the comments section below. If you've got your own combinations you want to suggest, then by all means leave that in the comments section as well. I can read through those and perhaps some of the changes you suggest I can uh, experiment with as well so plenty to talk about and then if you are in youtube channel membership it's easy to join link in the video description below as uh, you can go onto discord uh, and discuss there and uh, it's the luke's armies tab then you can leave your own comments and feedback uh, just there but there it is that is the list here for the orcs quite an exhaustive video but the idea is just to run down all the hints and tips for the structure of this list and show you different combinations that work uh, well for the Orcs. We'll see how well they get on in their games, but I think this is uh, quite a force to be reckoned with. Leave your own comments and feedback. Keep a look out for more videos in this series. Uh, and then just before you go, make use of the painting tutorials. All of these units, vehicles, models have been uh, painted using that exact, exact same process. Tutorial for... There's a tutorial for the Orcs, Stomper as well actually. So there's three tutorials for the Orcs. The Stomper, the Truck and the Boys. Uh, so you can make use of those. Uh, and the list should be there available for you as well and if you feel inspired to expand your collection or indeed to collect an army to fight against them then uh, do use the link below for the outpost for discount 40k other gaming systems hobbies and accessories uh, and by using that link it does help support the channel thanks for watching tune in next time